Greetings! It is I, Tantus Nara and Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the 5th edition of Dungeon Dragons, 5th Ed D&D. We last left off, we've been talking about NPCs, non-player characters. Let's talk about NPCs joining your adventuring party. So, why would an NPC join an adventuring party? Well, they might do it for a share of the loot, for all the treasures that you're gaining as a party, and they're willing to take on the massive risks associated with trying to get that loot. It's dangerous to go with an adventuring party, and if they're willing to do it and willing to get the cash, then yeah, they're willing to come along. Now this NPC is either going to be controlled, of course, by the, game, the dungeon master, or it could be possible that the DM will hand over the control of this NPC to one of the players. Regardless of if it is controlled by the DM or a player, the NPC should be treated just like an actual character, an actual member of the party. They have their own bonds, ideals, and flaws that should be acted out, and the player or DM who's controlling the NPC should act on them accordingly. It's not going to be some kind of automaton, it's actually going to be a flesh and blood member of the party and act accordingly. It's also going to be important to note that if you, the DM, give it to the players, that they're not just treating this NPC as a servant or some kind of, of minion that they can manipulate to their whim. They have to actually treat them like a real person and learn that that's something important to do. It's also important to note that the NPC gets a share of the EXP, the experience. And that when you're calculating encounter levels, you're going to take into account that the NPC is going to be a member of the group's party. So they're going to be added in when figuring out that encounter difficulty. Now, your campaign may call on your players having basically low-level followers. Now, a low-level follower can be actually really helpful to your game. Effectively, what this could be is it could be a replacement for your character for one of your player's characters, should they take some time off, retire from adventuring, or even die. They've got a replacement character lined up with this apprentice they've been training. So they're ready with a new character that they've been developing under control of them. The disadvantage of this, of course, is you're splitting the XP. So there's a multiple levels to that disadvantage. First off, your apprentice, your, your followers, they're going to gain levels a lot quicker. They're, they're going to be much level lower, lower level than you. You're going to be much higher, so it's much higher difficulty encounters since you're adding them all together to figure out that difficulty. They're getting a big chunk of experience for them, leveling faster, and they might even reach the same level as you before they would be replacing you. It can happen. Another thing you have to think about is you as a player get less experience. You level slower because a chunk of your experience is going to those NPCs. Also, while some kind of difficult high-level encounter might be appropriate for your high-level characters, they can easily smite and kill your low-level NPC followers. They could easily die to whatever it is, so you're also going to be responsible for protecting them and make sure whatever threat is going on that you're battling against doesn't murder them also. Now, the other big option for doing this is what happens when your party, you don't feel like it has enough players. Maybe you only have two players. Maybe you have three, and you'd like a balanced party of four. Or, if you're only the two, you'd like a third. An NPC might be called upon in order to fill out and balance out your party, at least to add a little bit in so that they're not being overwhelmed by the difficulties that you've been establishing. In this case, you're going to build the NPC just like a character. Now, the thing is, you do have an option here of having one of your characters build the NPC too. That's completely fine. But regardless if you build it, or you have a player build it, this NPC is going to be constructed just like any of the other characters. The same stats, the same builds, the same kind of equipment, the same kind of advancement. It'll have ideals, bonds, and flaws, just like a player. It's basically building a second player if it's built by a player, or just another player if it's built by you, the DM. At that point in time, you could either control it, or you could give it, of course, to a player to control. 
and they have to make sure when they're controlling it, they have it act out to whatever is appropriate to the character you built. The ideals, the bonds, the flaws, as I talked about earlier, this is very important at this time that you make sure this character acts appropriately. If you ever feel like the character is not being treated properly, if you're not running it and you give it to a player, it, you are free to either take it away from that player, run it yourself, take it away from that player and give it to someone else, or to say that that character leaves the party because of the way it's been treated by the other players, because it should be treated as another player, it's just more automated than the rest of people because it's technically an extra character. Now, loyalty is sort of an optional rule that you can bring in to help dictate how well the NPCs in a party think of their fellow characters in the party. This loyalty score reflects how well that the NPC might be willing to sacrifice their life to put themselves in danger for the other party members or to not do that, depending on how high or low the loyalty is. It could be that they're so disloyal that they will not be willing to step in. It could be that they're loyal, that they're willing to basically die for someone. The fact is that something like a debt of life will increase loyalty, while mistreating them will drop loyalty. Now, the base loyalty score for an NPC joining a party is going to be equal to the highest charisma amongst all the PC's charisma scores maximum 20 because an NPC's loyalty score is from 0 to 20. So you will look at whatever highest charisma among the entire party, whoever that is, that's the base loyalty maximum you're starting out. The actual starting number that you start out at is of course half of that number. So you can only start out at 10 at maximum for loyalty for an NPC. You can easily start lower than that. Should something occur that the highest charisma among the entire party members changes, whether it goes up or down, regardless if someone dies and then it's going down, or it raises because someone put charisma up at like a stat up, then that changes the max loyalty. If the a loyalty score would be at that max loyalty, it would of course drop. If it's somewhere in the middle, it's unaffected technically. It's just the max loyalty will change in that case, which it could possibly change the loyalty of your NPC. Now, loyalty score is going to be a secret score that you as the DM keep. Your players shouldn't know about it. They should not know how loyal their NPC is to them. Now, certain things will rise, raise it. If your players help your NPC out upon their goal that they have, you will raise their loyalty by 1d4. If they should do something out to assist it and to protect it and to be kind to said NPC, then of course you raise it by a d4. And you should look at the times that it feels like it's appropriate to apply these. If the NPC has a goal and you're making steps towards it, then maybe a couple of times of rolling it might not be a bad idea. In the same retrospect, if they do a lot of things to treat it well, then finding those couple of times to maybe roll it might also be appropriate too. Now on the converse though, if the bonds, the alignment, or the, I the ideals, if the basic character of the NPC is opposed by whatever actions the players are cause are doing, then you're going to reduce the loyalty of the NPC by a d4, because the players are doing something that would be against what this NPC would wish to do. In the same retrospect, if you do anything to effectively endanger its life or put it in a situation where it's facing some certain death purposefully and without its permission, then you will reduce the loyalty by 2d4. Loyalty can never drop below zero, but should a loyalty hit zero, effectively it's the point in time where the NPC is no longer loyal to the team and most likely will leave it. Think of it this way. If I have a loyalty on an NPC of 10 or higher, that, loyal, that NPC is pretty much loyal to me and might be willing to do some things to endanger itself to help me out. If I have a loyalty from 1 to 10, then at this point in time we have a much more tenuous relationship He's not quite loyal, it's figuring us out, it, it might do some things to help us out, but it might be more the fact that it doesn't want us to die and it was help its goal, but it probably wouldn't put itself in a major amount of danger for us. And at zero, it's planning on leaving, if it hasn't left already. Or even at worse, it could actually be planning the downfall of the team and plotting against you, depending on how well you actually treated it to get to that zero. 
If it's merely just things against the alignment or bonds, then it's just like, I don't get along with you guys, I leave. While if you treated it like crap, then it might be like, hey giants, they're here, eat them. You can see how it, the difference is. So that's it for today. I talked about NPCs as part of your player's group, adventuring group. I, of course, talked about the two major types that you're going to have. Pilot, you know, followers, who happen to be low-level NPCs that could be replacements for your character in some way, some point in time, when it's needed. Of course, then I also talked about full-fledged party members that are NPCs. When your party's not big enough, or for whatever reason an NPC has to really journey with you, then of course it's going to be a full-fledged party member, and you should treat it as such. And then I talked about loyalty. A number which tells you how much the NPC is willing to do for your party because of a combination of how they've treated him, and treated them, and how your party's ideals, goals, bonds relate to the NPC's ideals, goals, and bond. That the essence of the character of the party, how well it matches with the NPCs. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about contacts and hierarchy. If you have any questions, comments, anything to say, anything to think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's your support of the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link description below. Regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.